Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Sir, uh, you're here to testify about your brother, uh, George Floyd, is that right? Yes, sir. And before uh, you tell the jury uh, about uh, your brother, I'd like you to introduce yourself to the jury a little bit so they know something about you. Uh, are you, uh, how old are you? 39. Was George your older or younger brother? He was my oldest brother. Uh, are you married? Yes, sir. And do you have children? Yes, sir. How many children do you have? Two. And sir, where do you, uh, what state do you live in? Houston, Texas. Okay. Uh, I'd like you to tell the jury a little bit about your brother, George Floyd. First, can you tell the jury uh, where and when he was born? He was born in Fayetteville, North Carolina, but he left uh, at a young age. Um, he we uh, moved like uh, to Houston, Texas, and uh, I have two other sisters that are older than us. It's Jaja Floyd, Latonya Floyd, then became George Floyd, and I'm next Falonis Floyd, and my other brother Rodney Floyd, who's my mom's baby boy. All right. Mm -hmm. And uh, was he born on October 14, 1973? Yes, sir. And you say that he, uh, the family left uh, Fayetteville uh, shortly after he was born, is that right? Yes, sir. And you all grew up in Houston together? We all grew up in Houston. Uh, who were George's parents? Uh, Larsenia, Larsenia Floyd, Larsenia Jones Floyd, and his father was George Perry Floyd Sr. And did La Senia, is that your mother? That's my mother, but uh, they called her Miss Sissy. Miss Sissy. Yes. Sir. Who called her Miss Sissy? Uh, everybody called her Miss Sissy. Uh, we just called her mom, uh, but everybody around the neighborhood called her Miss Sissy. Any, anybody that knew her called her that, and that was that. They had to be like 50 years of age, but everybody younger than that called her mom. That was George's age. Everybody called her mom because she was a mom to so many people in the community. What community uh, was that? That was in Third Ward, and I grew up in the CUNY Home Housing Authority projects. Uh, it was low income, poverty. So uh, we stayed with each other all the time. Me and, me and George, we grew up together playing video games a lot. Uh, his favorite game was on Nintendo. We played double dribble, and we played Tecmo Bowl. And I finally beat him in a game, and I was just so happy just thinking about, about that. And he reset the game and would say, come on, let's play again. And I'd be like, no, nah, I gotta go do our chores now. Let me do my chores. But George, also, he used to make the best banana mayonnaise sandwiches, and he used to make syrup sandwiches because George couldn't cook, he couldn't boil water. So, and also if you, well, if you all were there in our house, you'll see George had lines on the wall because he will always measure with his height trying to see how tall he is because he wanted to be taller all the time because he loved sports. So he always wanted to be the best. And I'm going to interrupt you for a, for a mm -hmm. moment. I appreciate you sharing that with us. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to show the witness uh, what's been marked for identification as Exhibit 284. Uh, do you recognize uh, the picture in 284? Yes, sir. Is yes. that a picture of your mother and George when he was younger? Yes, sir. I'm going to offer Exhibit 284. Okay. 284 is received. Permission to publish. Sir, would you please describe uh, this photo and what you know about it? That's, that's my mother. She's no longer with us right now, but that's, that's my oldest brother, George. I miss both of them. They are, I was married. In May 24th, I got married. And my brother was killed May 25th. And my mom died on May 30th. So it's like a, a bittersweet month because I'm supposed to be happy when their month comes. And sir, I'm going to 
uh, ask you some questions about uh, your mom's passing a little bit. If you need a moment, I can take a minute and just let me know when you're ready. Okay. Well, going back to growing up in the in the, in the CUNY homes, uh, can you please tell the jury what role um, George Floyd had as a, as the older brother in that household? He was so much of a, a leader to us in the household. He will always make sure that we had our clothes for school. He made sure that we all were going to be uh, to school on time. And like I told you, George couldn't cook, but he'll make sure you have a snack or something to get in the morning. But he, uh, he was one of those people in the community that when they had church outside, people would attend church just because he was there. Nobody would go out there until they seen him. And he just was like a, a person that everybody loved around the community. He, he just knew how to make people feel better. And sir, you indicated, uh, well, first you aware of where uh, George Floyd went to school. Mm -hmm. He went to school at uh, Blackshear Elementary and from Blackshear it was Ryan Middle School and from Ryan it was Jack Gates High School where he excelled in sports and basketball and football. He was, he had uh, received a scholarship to attend South Florida College and from there he played basketball there and he transferred to Texas A&M Kingsville where he played football. All right. Now, uh I'd like to show the witness uh, Exhibit 285 for identification. Sir, do you recognize what's shown in Exhibit 285? Yes, sir. Yeah. Is that a picture of your brother when he was at the Jack Yates High School in Houston? Yes, sir. Yeah. Offer Exhibit 285. Any objection? No, no. 285 is received. And permission to publish. Approximately, how old uh, would George Floyd have been when this picture was taken? It's like, it looked like, like 18 or 17 at that time. And you talked about um, uh, basketball and playing basketball. Uh, if I can show Exhibit 287 to the witness. 87, 287. Thank you. All right, showing you what's been marked for identification is Exhibit 287. Uh, do you recognize this photo? Yes, sir. Is there a picture of your brother in this photo? Yeah, uh, he's number five, uh, South Florida, all the way in the left-hand corner. All right, I'm going to offer Exhibit 287. Any objection? 287 is received. And permission to publish. All right, you indicated that your brother was number five. On the, is that on the far yes. left? Yes, sir. Okay. And. Uh, South Florida, uh, was that a community college? South Florida was a community college. Um, I'm, I'm looking at it. I noticed a whole bunch of the ball players because I met a lot of them coming up. Did, uh, did George Floyd uh, maintain you know, his uh, level of fitness and love of basketball throughout his life? Yes, sir. He, he loved the workout. He loved playing basketball. Um, people, he loved teaching people the game of basketball. Uh, that's to me where I really uh, learned how to play from him because he guided a lot of guys on the court and showed them what they need to do mm -hmm, to be better. And when he would talk about playing basketball, would he use any particular term or phrase? Oh, he uh, said, hey man, let's go hooping. And we will always say, come on, let's go. Um, we always went hooping. and. Uh, you have to you have to hoop every day because if you don't go and shoot a whole bunch of shots like 50 to 100 shots a day, I'm, my brother will always say you'll never be able to compete. And hooping was big because Magic you had to watch the stars. We watched Michael. We watched Magic. We watched everybody hoop every day. And uh, if you could take that down, you indicated that um, George Floyd was also interested in, in football or had a passion for football. Is that right? Yes, sir. Would he play catch with you? He would play catch with us. It's funny how I always thought that my brother couldn't throw, but he never intended to throw the ball to me. 
he will always throw it at an angle where I have to go chase it and jump for it or dive for it. And I came up to him one day, I said, man, I said, I see why you play tight end and stuff because you can't throw it all. And he was like, I don't want to throw the ball to you because if I throw it to you, you'll never understand you have to go get the ball. He said, the ball should never come to you. You should always tell yourself, I'm going to go get the football because you have to attack the ball. That's what he told and sir, was your uh, brother uh, a father? Yes, sir. I'm going to show you what's been marked for identification as Exhibit 290, just to the witness. Uh, do you recognize what's shown in Exhibit 290? Yes, sir. Is that a picture of your brother with his daughter? Yes, sir. Offer Exhibit 290. Any objection? 290 is received. And permission to publish. Uh, and what's uh, his daughter's name? Gianna. How old is she now? Seven. Sir, could you please, for the jury, uh, describe George Floyd's relationship with his mother? Oh, it was it was one of a kind. Uh, George, he would always be up on our mom. He was a big mama's boy. Uh, I cry a lot, but George, she loved his mom. He will always just be up on her. And, you know, every mother loves all of her kids, but it was so unique how they were with each other. He would lay, just lay up on her in the fetus position like he was still in a womb. Um, I would see him every day, and I'd say, period. I'd say period because we called him period instead of George. And he would always say, hold on, let me kiss mama before I come over there. And being around him, he showed us like uh, how to treat our mom and how to respect our mom. He, he just, he loved her so dearly. And when George, he had uh, found out that my mom was passing because she had to stay with us for hospice and he was talking to her over the phone but she perished before he even came down here so that right there it, it hurt him a lot and when we went to the funeral it's just George just sat there at the casket over and over again he would just say mama mama over and over again and I didn't know what to tell him because I was in pain too. We all were hurting. And he was just kissing her and just kissing her. He didn't want to leave the casket. And everybody was like, come on, come on, it's going to be okay. But it was, it was just difficult because no, I don't know who can take that when you watch your mother, somebody who loved and cherish you and nourish you for your entire life and then they have to leave you. We all have to go through it, but it's difficult. And George, he was, he was just in pain the entire time. Sir, you indicated your mother passed away May 30, that was 2018, is that right? Yes, sir. And uh, you described um, seeing your brother George uh, at the funeral, is that right? Yes, sir. And was was around the time of your mother's passing the last time you saw your brother George Floyd in person alive? Yes, sir. Did you maintain contact with him uh, on the phone uh, through text and whatnot after that? Yeah, we uh, text. Uh, we called each other. Um, he would call and I would call him, but we would talk a lot of times early in the morning because I was a truck driver. So he will always be up talking to me and getting pointers on how to back up, um, how to do this, shifting gears, different things like that. And I had great teachers, so I would also just explain to him what he needed to do. And that level, to get to that next tier, that's what he would do. He would just listen. And he became a student. And I always had to ask him for advice because it was my big brother. Uh, sir, and this is a, a yes or no question. Were you informed that your brother, George Floyd, died on May 26, 2020? 
Yes, sir. All right. Um, thank you very much. Uh, I have no further questions, Your Honor. Any questions?